Uh, welcome, everybody. This is Rachel Richardson. I'm from Duke University, and we are hosting uh, this WebEx um, so that Chuck and I can give a summary of the MCBK meeting, and we've got um, our, our co-chairs joining us as well, which is terrific. Um, Chuck, I will turn it over to you now, and you've got control of the slides, and you can um, give sort of the outline and instructions. Okay, uh, thanks, Rachel. Let me add uh, my welcome. This is Chuck Friedman of the University of Michigan, and we're delighted to have so many people joining us uh, today uh, on this webinar which really is focused on um, summarizing the uh, events that, that uh, took place at the very exciting uh, second annual uh, MCBK meeting, uh, which was co-sponsored um, by uh, the National Library of Medicine and held at the Natural Conference Center on July 18th and 19th uh, uh, on the NIH campus. So uh, just a little housekeeping. Uh, as, each, as each of you uh, enter um, the, uh, the, the uh, webinar, uh, your line is going to be muted. Uh, if you have questions, you can uh, pose them via the chat pod, which uh, you can use uh, by clicking on the Send To drop-down menu and selecting everyone and then submitting your question. Uh, we, uh, we, we might unmute. Uh, participants uh, during the question and answer period, and uh, we'd be delighted because one hour will pass very, very quickly uh, to continue this conversation on Twitter. Chuck, can I just interrupt and ask folks, We are, I'm not able to mute everyone, it seems, so people could also be sure to mute on their end as well. Okay, thanks, Rachel. We are... Uh, we are hearing some background noise, so let me uh, just repeat what Rachel uh, requested of everyone. Uh, it's not possible for us to mute everyone who's uh, on the webinar, just some of you. So, so if you are not muted, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, please mute your own uh, line. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to have uh, five components uh, to today's uh, webinar. Uh, I'm going to make some uh, comments about uh, the foundations of the mobilizing computable biomedical knowledge movement. I'll move very quickly uh, on the supposition that um, a lot of you have, um, have heard this already, but certainly not all of you, and, and also on the, on, on the uh, supposition that if you do need more detail, uh, you can go to the MCBK website and actually see videos of the entire meeting, uh, including the overview presentation that Rachel and I gave at the very beginning, which will give you much more detail uh, about the foundations of MCBK. Um, Rachel will then take over from me and will uh, review the highlights uh, of the meeting. Uh, this will be followed by four updates, by one, each by one of the co-chairs of our four MCBK work groups. And, um, and, and with good fortune, uh, we will have some time at the end for your, uh, for your questions and answers. As we said, the conversation can continue on Twitter. And um, you are certainly welcome to write to either uh, Rachel or myself or to mcbkinfo, underscore info, mm -hmm. uh, at, at umich, U-M-I-C-H dot E-D-U to reach the general um, email uh, for, uh, for MCBK, and if you write to us, uh, we'll be happy to uh, respond uh, to your uh, message. So I, I think the, uh, to my way of thinking, uh, the, 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 the major jumping off point uh, for MCBK is what can be conceived of as a second knowledge revolution. Uh, I'll remind everyone that the first knowledge revolution uh, resulted from the uh, invention of the printing press in the 15th century. And one way to look at what the printing press achieved is that it enabled serial mass access to human readable knowledge. So, uh, so knowledge could be published and printed and, and made available and read and acted upon 
uh, and then people could read about those actions and um, act upon them in turn, and those people could read about those actions and act upon them in turn. And I think it's clear that what I'm describing here um, is a serial process. What, in our view, uh, is a coming revolution that we are uh, bold enough to call a second knowledge revolution um, is made possible by digital technology and, uh, and, and results from the, a process which would convert human readable knowledge into a representation of that same knowledge in computable form, and this enables a parallel process that enables mass uh, application of this knowledge uh, to improve health, allowing uh, knowledge dissemination um, that uh, cuts across uh, various health scopes and that goes to many, many people, uh, all of that to occur almost simultaneously with little more effort than it would take to uh, send this knowledge uh, from one area uh, to, to one person. And this was what we mean by parallel mass action. We are thinking about knowledge in MCBK in a somewhat narrow sense, uh, but I think a very important sense. And we're thinking about knowledge as a result. And, and in particular, the result of an analytical and or deliberative process that holds significance for an identified community. And th this definition is very important, and I want to point out two features of it. One is that knowledge can result from analytical processes or deliberative processes. Uh, for example, uh, clinical guidelines in some uh, cases result entirely from panel deliberations. And, uh, and, and, and results become knowledge. This is the second point. Uh, when and only when it acquires some kind of significance in the identified community, for example, when a professional association adopts uh, a guideline, that is an expression that um, th this result uh, holds significance for that uh, community. There are examples of biomedical knowledge that uh, result from uh, as you read down the bullets from primarily analytical to primarily deliberative processes, predictive and explanatory models, for example, that result from machine learning, uh, quite clearly are primarily analytical. But as you move toward uh, uh, more uh, deliberative uh, origins of, uh, of knowledge, you see it, it also includes best practices, decision trees, and even policies. Um, all of which fall into this family of biomedical knowledge, which can be represented both in human readable and computable forms, which is the theme of the next slide. So at present, as, as a result of the first knowledge revolution, uh, we, we as a society have the capability of representing knowledge in human readable forms and words and pictures and printed equations, and our libraries uh, as our holders of knowledge uh, have collections of books and journals as the primary components of their holdings. In the future, as a result of the second knowledge revolution, which enables mass action, uh, uh, the knowledge is represented in a in machine executable form in code, and we use this um, what we jocularly call a golf ball representation to, to, uh, uh, to uh, signify a knowledge object um, containing machine executable uh, knowledge. And uh, if we believe that this future will be realized, it will follow that the holdings of our libraries will add digital, digital knowledge objects corresponding to human readable knowledge as part of their collections. And it also follows that it will be the case that when um, research is done uh, and a result is generated, the, uh, the, uh, un the, 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 the team that undertakes that research will not be finished when they've published a human readable version of uh, their uh, results um, in a, in a uh, journal article, for example, as shown on the left side of this slide. The pipeline will need to be extended. The model will need to be extracted 
from the paper, and um, programming will be required uh, to convert uh, that knowledge to a computable um, uh, form uh, expressed in code, and and um, and um, that will become part of the collections of an expanded library, a, a second revolution library, which includes this, this computable knowledge. So this is a fundamental idea. Uh, a movement, MCBK, mobilizing computable uh, biomedical knowledge, uh, has taken shape uh, to do exactly what its name uh, says, to, to, to accelerate the, uh, the development and accessibility and activation of uh, computable biomedical knowledge. We sometimes talk about this as a movement to make knowledge fair, findable, uh, accessible, interoperable, uh, and reusable. The interim home of the MCBK movement is the University of Michigan. It is governed by a steering committee uh, and has expressed its mission and vision in a manifesto. Uh, I will show you a quick picture of that uh, in a moment, but the manifesto can be accessed uh, from the MCBK uh, website. We've had several activities uh, to date. There have been two open annual meetings uh, uh, on the NIH campus in the summers of 2018 and 19. MCBK has spawned four work groups that you will hear about in more detail. Uh, MCBK has made available a range of web resources. Uh, and MC MCBK has held several webinars, um, one of which is happening right now, and another one of which is scheduled, uh, and we'll tell you a bit more about that one uh, in, in, in a little while. And uh, MCBK is spawning a national and global uh, collaborations, including a um, United Kingdom uh, MCBK uh, meeting, which uh, is, is turning out to be very popular and is going to take place on October 29th uh, in, in London. So our first inaugural public meeting uh, was July 10th and 11th uh, at the Lister Hill Center on the NIH campus, part of the National Library of Medicine. And um, here is one representation of the MCBK manifesto, which contains, like all good manifestos, a, um, a preamble, uh, a definition of computable biomedical knowledge, a vision for MCBK, uh, and the action mechanisms by which uh, MCBK will uh, realize uh, this vision. We encourage you, uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, to, to take a read uh, through this manifesto. And, and if you wish to take a copy of it and nail it to your wall in the spirit of Martin Luther. So uh, that completes my comments. Rachel, I think it's over uh, to you, and you will summarize uh, the program from the July 2019 um, MCBK meeting. Perfect. Thanks, Chuck, for, for that background. And I think I have managed to take the slides, and uh, I'm going to assume everyone will hear me uh, and jump in if you don't. Uh, so let me quickly overview some of the components of this meeting. Uh, we were really pleased with, with the turnout. We had 190 registrants and 160 people participated. There's always a bit of a drop off there. As, as Chuck mentioned, it was um, at, in July at the uh, Nature Conference Center at the National Institutes of Health. And the goals of this meeting were to strengthen the foundation of this community on the values and principles that, that Chuck, you just mentioned um, from the manifesto, which was developed in conjunction with, with members of the community. And there were several public iterations of that. Um, we also wanted to frame and address important dimensions for mobilizing CBK and to advance work groups and their action plans, which we'll hear a little bit about uh, towards the end of the webinar, and identify priorities, plan next steps, and, and grow the MCBK community. Those goals and, and the program components itself were, were uh, developed with, with significant input and, and guidance from, um, from a, a illustrious steering committee, which I'm um, grateful for and, and, and proud to display uh, here. Um, the, the steering committee, um, as I mentioned, helped, helped plan uh, the components of the meeting, the, the tone and, and, our, and our goals, and, and is currently uh, overseeing and guiding efforts uh, as, we, as we move forward with some of the activities that will We'll hear about later on this webinar. The program components at, at a high level included some 
uh, excellent speakers. We had just some tremendous speakers uh, that kicked us off each day um, and gave us a foundation um, and perspective and their vision for mobilizing computable biomedical knowledge and, and uh, to support the working meeting itself and the, and the work and discussions that we undertook uh, those two days. Uh, we had several panels, which I'll talk about uh, uh, briefly in a moment. We had technical demonstrations, um, breakout sessions with the work groups, and we had an open mic session. And then we had a wonderful reception that was hosted by the uh, University of uh, Michigan and was just a great opportunity for, for our diverse um, uh, and varied group to really get to know each other. So that was really enjoyable piece. Uh, let me highlight um, our, our speakers and, and some of the key points um, that they made. Our, our first speaker on the first day was Dr. Patty Brennan, who's the director of the National Library of Medicine, which is our national hub for health data science. And she gave a wonderful opening uh, address that really affirmed the strong interest of the NLM in the mobilization of CBK. And she described the National Library of Medicine's approach to creating uh, the 21st century collection of biomedical knowledge and, and supporting its broad use, um, specifically by making data sets fair, according to the, uh, the fair principles that Chuck uh, uh, alluded to earlier, and, and ready for advanced analytics. And um, their goal to create collections of literature, data, models, and tools that make them usable and useful for a wide range of users and stakeholders. Uh, Dr. Brennan spoke about models as the foundation for computable biomedical knowledge and discussed NLM's driving role in, in the creation and dissemination of generalizable and scalable and re reproducible and reusable models that can advance science and enable rigor, reproducibility, and, and, and reuse. We also had the honor of uh, Dr. Don Rutger, who's the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, and he shared his perspective from the, uh, the ONC, uh, which supports standards and regulations to ensure that health data can be exchanged uh, to support the kind of innovation and use of biomedical knowledge that this community um, envisions. Uh, Dr. Rucker highlighted big forces that will ultimately drive the mobilization of CBK and our efforts, including the growth of computing power and new devices and changing trends um, and how people are, are using these devices and how they interact over time. And he also highlighted um, uh, the economic revolution that is currently underway in healthcare and suggested that that will be a big driver for MCBK and, and our, our movement. Um, there's currently a lot of public passion and congressional interest that he described in consumer issues like drug pricing, drug pricing and surprise billing. And he suggested that to address these national problems, we need transparent information about price and we need standards and analytic met methods to compute and communicate that price effectively, um, and that this will really transform the discussions that we can have around quality, uh, as will the ONC's uh, future efforts to really support the exchange of population level data, not just one-to-one -one, uh, patient, um, uh, end of one data exchange, if you will, but uh, population level data, which will enable payers to assess value and provide business incentives to improve value in, in healthcare. So that was a, a wonderful uh, talk. Um, I'll remind everyone to mute their microphones, if, if you will. Uh, our, uh, we also had the honor of uh, Dr. Deepak Kalra, who's president of the European Institute of Innovation through Health Data. And he shared some global perspectives on the sharing of data and the potential for CBK to uh, improve research and healthcare and the commingling of research and healthcare that's fundamental to the concept of learning health systems that many of us are, are interested in uh, supporting. Uh, Dr. Kalra highlighted a number of initiatives in Europe as is examples of how CBK is being used or is envisioned to be used to support innovations to improve uh, population health. Um, he apologized he couldn't give, uh, provide justice to each of the programs he described, but he did uh, successfully give us this great picture of the tremendous amount of activity and energy um, around uh, data-driven health innovation and CBK in Europe. And his slides um, are an expanded set of slides. In addition to his presentation, he provided us more detailed information on, on many of these European projects that, that, that he highlighted. Uh, and one uh, major theme of his talk was the idea that we could learn from data standards communities who've had so much experience, um, decades worth, um, and successes in identifying 
identifying what makes standards useful and how they can encourage adoption to support new innovation. And he suggested that multiple types of resources, such as legal frameworks and agreements and training materials or training guidance, um, just as these types of resources helped organizations evaluate and implement standards, data standards, the same can be said for how um, we can get the right information to potential adopters of CBK uh, to use that information. Um, and finally, uh, uh, he hinted at the need for a CBK ecosystem uh, that can monitor and improve CBK, suggesting that we might support growth of uh, knowledge communities rather than passive adopters of, of people who reuse CBK or these models or algorithms and then alter them and then improve them and then have data to share based on their deployment. So it's a great, uh, great talk of food for thought there. Uh, we had a number of panels. There was a terrific panel. Uh, we had four panelists uh, present four distinct use cases of CBK um, to help us get a picture of the far-reaching value proposition for MCBK. And these were illustrative use cases, not exhaustive, but um, uh, the speakers did a wonderful job. Sean Granis described public health uh, uses for CBK, including automated public health reporting, Mark Overage um, uh, described how CBK could support chronic disease management and prevention. Uh, Dr. Jenny Larkin described the research applications of MCBK, including a great example of, of the challenges, the pr prediction and data science ch challenges that are going on and how, how organizers can manage those models and, um, and disseminate them for future use. And um, last but not least, Anderson Spicker described a, a range of important applications for CBK in the area of health providers. Uh, education um, and there was great enthusiasm for that topic um, throughout the meeting that I heard uh, and all the panelists really uh, emphasize that their use cases are still largely unachieved due to missing components still the standards policies incentives for sharing CBK and our culture of sharing and reusing knowledge is not quite there yet in many organizations so there are many challenges um, to, to, to still be addressed and I'm happy to say that this group has agreed to uh, present this use case panel again on a webinar uh, probably in November so we will um, send that information around uh, after this webinar. Um, and then we had another panel on engaging critical stakeholders. Um, and this was really very interesting uh, source of, of, of discussion. Uh, first, Nancy Ali, who's the um, interim director of the Taubman Health Sciences Library at University of Michigan, gave an overview of the current landscape for scholarly communication um, and the changing roles and needs of the medical publication industry and how they can benefit from CBK and assist in this national transformation of knowledge-enabled healthcare. Um, she described her challenges um, as a health librarian um, and uh, changing financial models and new partnerships between academic medical libraries and publishers um, and uh, went on to describe um, the uh, pilot problem program that uh, the Learning Health Systems Journal, um, published by Wiley and owned by University of Michigan, um, is now um, underway. They are accepting um, submissions for computable biomedical knowledge publications, and so uh, we're going to learn from this experience, and they will share their, their experience on how, um, how they're, they're managing um, and organizing and disseminating these tools. So that was very exciting. Uh, also, she touched on open access publishing and the big global push toward that, but, but the number of questions that are still unanswered about uh, how, how, to, how to make that work logistically and financially. Um, we also had uh, a Jerry Perry, um, who also is a director, he's a director of the University of Arizona Health Sciences Library, and he shared his perspectives on need for equitable access to information and knowledge and community engagement in, in health, uh, clinical research and health-related uh, information and knowledge. Uh, uh, Jerry suggested that the mobilization of CBK is not just about getting the knowledge out, but also about identifying strategies and mechanisms to enable accountability related to the quality and use of that information. Um, and he noted that although we had deep literacy in our room around technical issues and standards and policy, for example, um, we also needed to develop more literacy around human behavior and how people respond to new information as it's consumed and, and utilized. Uh, and, and finally, Jerry uh, challenged us to identify 
and include a broad range of stakeholders, many critical stakeholders, including those that aren't engaged in our efforts, but really are the, the, the end users of, of, of CBK, um, and suggested that we can refine our, our craft in terms of stories and, and, and use cases to express the value of uh, CBK to these different uh, communities. Uh, we had a great uh, turnout in terms of technical demonstrations and panels. I won't uh, go over all these now, but I'll say they are posted on the website, both the technical demo uh, summaries and, um, and the posters. Um, but we had a huge variety of uh, submissions and presentations from um, CBK um, and knowledge developers and users and disseminators, um, including those from the commercial sector, health provider organizations, federal uh, and academic. So um, really just a great um, um, uh, turnout on these more than we ever expected when we were uh, submitted the call for them. And finally, we ended on um, uh, a, a panel with some of our steering committee members sharing their, their, their thoughts of the meeting and the highlights, um, challenging us with some personal stories of the importance of CBK and things that we as a community still need to think about in terms of our vision um, and, and future activity. And so uh, there are so many unanswered questions about MCBK, the community, Community and how it'll move forward, but we're starting to have those discussions. So this was a great opportunity uh, to begin that. Um, we had open mic sessions and we had um, uh, opportunity for each of our speakers and panels to have some a good question and answers and discussion. And again, uh, this is documented on our, on our website, but I think this was a really successful piece of the meeting and I really enjoyed, and I think all our work group co-chairs as well, hearing different perspectives and things that, that hadn't been thought of yet. So it's a growing community and still a need to engage engage others uh, as we move forward. Um, and with that said, I'd like to now uh, turn it over. The next portion will have um, each of our work group uh, co-chairs will give a short update on um, what, uh, what, what their groups are working on and what their impressions of the meeting are. And then after that, we'll move to uh, open discussion and, and, and questions and answers. So the first work group update we have uh, will be Bruce Bray, I believe. Um, and I'm going to unmute you, Bruce. Oh, there you should be unmuted. Bruce, are you there? Yes. Oh, great. Okay, and I'll just advance your slides, and thanks for joining us today. Okay, so, so I'm a uh, recent co-chair of the Standards uh, Work Group with an MCBK. Uh, of course, all the last thing we need is another set of standards, so don't really this group isn't there to create any new standards, but to can identify and and use the existing standards uh, to promote the, the knowledge uh, mobilization side of things. So uh, we had mentioned the FAIR principles, so, you know, the idea of the FAIR data uh, principles of finding uh, findable, uh, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, and really trying to apply that to the knowledge space as well. So the, the initial work was around some, sort of looking at a couple of, uh, of use cases or scenarios, uh, one being a typical sort of complicated patient that uh, is goes across multiple providers and spaces with multiple different kinds of needs for knowledge uh, mobilization. The second, uh, <coughs> The case being around uh, precision medicine, the translational side of things with, with some of the genomics uh, content. Uh, and then, of course, what we really need is, is a couple of sort of unified uh, scenarios that would drive across all of the different uh, working aspects of the group to to use to kind of solidify on some some practical uh, outcomes that would uh, be useful. So the idea of really identifying uh, the, the metadata axes and dimensions of knowledge that can be used to, to mobilize, to share better, uh, and uh, a kind of a map, initial map of what these relevant standards look like. From that perspective, uh, there's a number of uh, efforts already ongoing out there, particularly the, the ARC, uh, the transforming the uh, care transformation support or arc X uh, project that uh, has put a lot of effort into identifying uh, these these kinds of uh, 
existing standards. So the idea would be to collaborate with those kinds of groups. Besides ARCs, you know, the, the Health Services Platform Consortium, various aspects of HL7, integrating healthcare enterprise kinds of things that would uh, basically collaborating across those spaces to identify the kinds of, of things that would uh, to be useful as standards to drive this forward. Uh, understanding the, the uh, and harmonizing with those those groups instead of trying to reinvent things. Uh, looking at the whole life cycle of, of knowledge management from the creation through the implementation, use, and and uh, provenance of of, uh, of uh, ongoing management, and the, the initial next steps, which might be something like coming up with a couple of uh, pilot projects to demonstrate the value of, of standards-based uh, knowledge management. I think that's that's all I had to say for that. Great. Thanks so much, Bruce. Uh, and I'll move now. I think we've got Leslie McIntosh. I'm going to un uh, unmute uh, you, Leslie. Just let me find you here. Um, I rebuted everybody. I apologize. We've been a little trouble with the microphones. Uh, okay. Leslie, are you on? I'm here. Can you oh, hear me? Wonderful. Yes, we can. And I'll go ahead and advance you to the next slide. Excellent. So I do want to thank my co-chair, Chris Schaefer, who was on the previous one. So we're um, very happy to be working together on this. So no, that's okay. Keep go ahead and advance. So um, these were the discussion points. But before I get to that, I just want to make sure that you know what we're talking about in infrastructure. And I think the standards leads right in beautifully, because if you think of something like a shipping container, as in what travels on semi trucks, or is shipped on boats, it, they work because they're a standard size. And we all wish that standards within uh, computable biomedical knowledge were quite that simple, but they're not, which is why we have the standards groups. But the process of getting that information, understanding how the, the knowledge tra uh, is, uh, moves from one thing to another, that process, those are the types of things that we work on. So really our call for the MCBK infrastructure, our charge is to identify the landscape of the stakeholders, which we've done, to describe the framework components as necessary to develop use cases and to act as a clearinghouse for news and events. And what we thought to, to move this forward for the meeting is we would discuss four things, but really it boiled down to these three things. And what are those components necessary to move computable biomedical knowledge? right, from, from generation into practice, facilitating the testing, versioning, use, evaluations, and, and um, such. How do we build and share this conceptual infrastructure? And then how does our work um, support this infrastructure? And what we decided we would do, you can go ahead and move to the next um, slide, is that we would start with our uh, interoperability and infrastructure requirements would be to write a position paper focused on the technical principles and to make this position paper as, as succinct as possible and um, but given enough information necessary for others to understand what we were doing and what our recommendations are. And we are looking at incorporating some real, real world examples and some many use cases. So that's what you should see within the next six months. The other thing I can tell you about our group is we uh, are very good at getting some work done. We did, I thought we had a very lively discussion in person. And then our webinars really are more of where introverts come together, but we work together um, through some, some Google Docs to understand what we are talking about. So if anyone on here it has not participated so far, but would like to have a say in, in infrastructure or understand um, or highlight some of their use cases for CDK, please contact us and we have a lot online and we can move that forward. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Leslie. That was a, a great summary. Uh, and now we'll move to the policy and coordination to ensure quality and trust. And we have Jody Platt on the line to summarize the activities of this group. Jody, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Perfect. Okay. 
Um, so, so we have a, a, a nice group of people working on trust and policy for computable biomedical knowledge um, itself, but also for, you know, how do we get that out and start to mobilize it so that it does achieve its um, objectives in the sort of for, the, for fairness and accessibility um, among all. So um, what our group is charged with is to focus on, you know, what are the gaps in policy and issues that would impact the quality of CPK or its trustworthiness. And so this year, what we focused on um, was really some of the work that the group has been engaged in in identifying the landscape of data and knowledge commons. So what's the work that's already out there? What is the knowledge commons? Who's doing them? Um, are they public enterprises? Are they private? Um, is there, are they somewhere in between? And then to begin to think about as we examine how those different knowledge commons are set up, what are the implications for governance, for trust, um, for how you actually begin to make that, to, um, so if trust sort of facilitates the exchange of CBK, how do we Im increase trust among all the stakeholders? Um, so right now, so the group had um, worked on this landscape analysis and we're currently writing that up and starting to sort of flesh out some of the work we didn't get done over the year um, to um, report those results and think about what are the market considerations, what are the appropriate governance strategies, and what are the implications for organizational culture. Um, and yeah. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, we're thinking a lot about what our role is in relation to the standards group, to the infrastructure group, to the technology group, um, and uh, are currently planning um, to have another face-to-face -face meeting, um, possibly in conjunction with uh, the AMIA conference and or the LC, uh, the Ethical, Legal, and Social Implications of Learning Health Systems Symposium, in November, both in November, um, so that we can sort of move this work forward. Um, and uh, we invite anybody who would like to be involved to be involved and thank the people who are involved um, to be involved. And I know some, so several of them are on this webinar right now and uh, in the open, you know, when it's up, I hope that they can speak up to some of the work we've been doing as well. Terrific. Thanks so much. And um, I, mm -hmm. I, I will take that as a plug for people that do have questions to go ahead and put those um, in the um, in the chat uh, uh, pod. You could do uh, probably to host would be the easiest, but if there's something uh, to share with all, you can do that. Um, I'm going to unmute um, our next work group speaker. So our final work group uh, to give an update is the Sustainability for Mobilization and Inclusion work group co-chaired by Jerry Perry and Chris Dimmick. Chris, are you uh, on the line? Yes, I'm here, Rachel. Okay. Perfect. Okay, great. Thanks. I'll advance for you. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone, or morning, depending on your time zone. Uh, my name is Chris Dimmick, uh, as Rachel indicated, and I'm the director of the Health Information Technology Division at the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. My colleague and partner in chairing this work group is Jerry Perry. Jerry is the Associate Dean for Health Sciences and the Director of the University of Arizona Health Sciences Library. Next slide, Rachel. So the goal for our work group's breakout sessions was to develop a plan for launching MCBK communication strategies. Earlier in the year, our work group decided to focus on professional societies whose members create, disseminate, and or steward computable biomedical knowledge. During our breakout sessions, we were fortunate enough to be joined by key representatives from the four professional societies you see listed on this slide. The American College of Obstetricians and, and Gynecologists, the American Medical Informatics Association, the Healthcare Information and Management Systems Society, and the Association of Academic Health Sciences Libraries. We interviewed these representatives and heard their thoughts about the types of MCBK messages or areas of work that would resonate most with their members. They also shared ways and formats their members prefer to receive communications and the types of early impactful messages that would resonate with their societies. Next slide. We were excited to learn that these societies really want to help us and are eager to support MCBK communications. Regarding communication methods, we learned that it would be best to work with the society's leadership and staff to use existing society structures to deliver MCBK messages. For example, societies like HIMSS and AMIA have working groups that we might connect with. 
Not surprisingly, we heard that we should focus on the value that MCBK would bring to the society and its members. We might do so by focusing on how MCBK can make life easier for society members. For example, uh, dealing with clinician burden is a key topic right now. So how might MCBK address that concern? We should also equate the MCBK value proposition with the society's business incentives if possible. So if a society provides member education, for example, we can connect potentially MCBK to those member education opportunities. We might also create new or enhance existing products that fill a gap for society members. Some partnering societies are interested in standards, for example. So communicating the results and work of our standards work group would be important. Lastly, we need to remember to meet people where they are and create jargon-free, relatable messages. MCDK reaches a host of interested groups with varied backgrounds, and we want all members of those groups to feel included in this movement. Next slide. So I'm happy to report that our workgroup breakout session resulted in five participants volunteering to work with Jerry and me to draft concrete communication strategies and tactical plans. We came up with a template to help our group do so. We're currently working on scheduling a meeting with our volunteers to launch this work. And after this webinar, if anyone else feels moved to help us, we'd love to hear from you. We also shared the notes from our breakout sessions with the larger SNI workgroup for their awareness, and we'll be scheduling a meeting with that larger workgroup later this month. And as many of you on this call know, the AMI annual meeting is coming up in November, and we'd like to plan for some communications there. We're also trying to tee up additional presentations at forthcoming meetings. For example, we recently submitted a panel presentation abstract for Health Data Palooza. And as always, Jerry and I welcome any ideas or questions you may have. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, uh, Chris, for that great summary, and to you and Chris and your entire team uh, for, for, for all the work you've done. Um, I also want to take this moment to thank um, all of our work group co-chairs and, and participants and volunteers for all the hard work um, and enthusiasm you've, you've given to this point. Um, it's really exciting to see all these groups move forward. Um, now, before we move into the discussion and, and Q&A portion, I'll, I'll sort of summarize where MCBK is in the future, and I'm hoping that uh, Chuck can feel comfortable to jump uh, right back in. I'm going to make sure that I've got him um, uh, unmuted here. Um, but uh, let's see, shall. Williams, yeah, I'm make sure that you're unmuted, Chuck, but I'll summarize that the work groups are really um, uh, need to continue and are the, the core and lifeblood of, of this movement. So these work groups are moving forward, and I encourage people uh, to look at the website uh, to find more information and ways to get engaged in any of these work groups if they're of interest. The summaries of the meeting, including some videos and, and, and written summaries and uh, 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 information on uh, the technical demos and posters are on our website. Uh, and then we have a few upcoming events um, and Chuck feel free to jump in if you if you want to on the MCBK UK um, otherwise I'll announce it's it's happening <laughs> uh, sure Rachel uh, I, I see that uh, I see that Philip Scott uh, from uh, from the University of Portsmouth who is one of the uh, co-organizers of the MCBK UK uh, meeting is, um, is 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 on the line. Uh, uh, Philip, if I say any welcome, and if I say anything that is incorrect, uh, 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 please. Uh, I hope you will you will uh, correct me. Just type something into the chat box. I'll uh, open him up in a minute. After we finish this, I'll, I'll give him the first okay. comment. Yeah. Okay. So we'll ask Peter, uh, Philip to make uh, 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 to make a comment. Um, yeah, I was just. Um, Delighted after some informal conversations for, with uh, uh, colleagues in the UK, uh, whom we knew to be interested in MCBK, uh, to uh, develop with them the idea that uh, there might be a, a UK uh, uh, meeting uh, around the same theme, recognizing how uh, time-consuming and uh, expensive it is to fly across the pond uh, to a meeting uh, in, in, in Washington, and uh, you're going to unmute Philip in a moment, but I, my understanding, Philip, is that um, the, uh, the interest in this meeting has been very high, 
and uh, we're uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing what comes out of it. You want to unmute Philip? Uh, maybe you uh, want. Uh, like, you should, yeah, uh, Philip, if you want to jump in now. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Uh, the the icon still shows me as muted, but if you can hear me, then that's good. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chuck. Um, yeah, so we've we've had a lot of interest. Uh, we, uh, as you say, we've got the meeting in London on the 29th of October. We've got somewhere between 50 and 60 people uh, registered to attend. Uh, we've got some very good speakers, including a keynote speaker uh, who is the chief technology officer of the new NHS central agency called NHS X. Um, we've got some of the same speakers, Deepak Kara, um, who, as you know, is based in London. He will be uh, attending. And we're actually planning to uh, publish the reports uh, in uh, one of the journals. So uh, we're, we're hoping to you know, contribute to the evidence base as well as uh, have a good interactive session. So um, one, one comment I was going to make, actually, on the, on the comms working group. Um, Obviously, we're, we're, we're reaching out to a primarily UK audience, but um, I think it's important that we don't forget the rest of the world. Um, so I was thinking that as well as AMIA, you might want to think about IMIA, the International Medical Informatics Association, which reaches out to all of the national member bodies uh, globally, and then specifically EFMI, the European Federation of Medical Informatics. So. Um, I, I can certainly link you up with people there if you don't have those contacts. But um, uh, obviously, individuals will continue to be involved with directly with the work groups and with the US meetings. Uh, and, and we're going to see what comes out of the October meeting in terms of, of what, what specific UK activities we can perhaps coordinate uh, and what things will continue to be done on an individual basis. But uh, there's certainly a lot of a lot of energy and enthusiasm around this topic. Wonderful. Thank you. And I think by communications work group, you, you're referring to the sustainability work group. And I've got Chris Dimmick. I don't know if you want to make sorry, I'm sorry if I got the name wrong. Yeah. Uh, no, that's fine. We'll, we'll note those. And um, if any of the co-chairs want to jump in, I'm going to unmute you um, and then uh, appreciate those comments. Uh, Chuck, if you want to finish up on uh, announcements and then if people have questions, please post them in the chat uh, and then we'll unmute you so you can. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, so uh, the uh, next webinar uh, has been scheduled for November 12th, as you see on the slide. I assume that will be at noon Eastern time, uh, uh, U.S. Eastern time, uh, like, uh, like, like this one. Uh, and uh, this webinar will be a replay of the use case panel from the 2019 meeting uh, as Rachel said, that panel was so stimulating and so illuminating uh, that um, we, we feel that uh, people who uh, were not able to attend uh, the meeting uh, should have an opportunity to be uh, exposed to it. The main point here is a point that I, I, I don't think we can repeat enough. The scope of MCBK is very large and very wide. There's, there's sort of uh, an instinct when you think about computable knowledge, those of us in informatics, um, and, you know, our minds run to clinical decision support. But in point of fact, the MCBK story transcends, uh, is transcendent, to, as the use case panel suggested, education, um, the full spectrum of biomedical research uh, and, and, and uh, public health as well as uh, as well as uh, health care and, and I think uh, this use case panel will really bring that that point home so I, I, I highly recommend it if you weren't there we are uh, we are beginning to plan uh, the next annual meeting uh, in in uh, 2020 and uh, we'll be having a meeting of the steering committee uh, very soon in fact in, in next week yeah. To, uh, to be where we will begin exploring uh, plans uh, for the annual meeting. If you have any thoughts to shape the annual meeting, where, when, agenda, uh, please uh, send an email to mcbk-info uh, uh, at umich.edu uh, so, we, uh, so we, we, we know your point of view. There are uh, a lot of decisions to be made. 
about how to best serve the needs of this growing MCBK community going forward, and we certainly want to take your viewpoint uh, into account. Uh, please complete the evaluation survey as well that you can um, uh, that, that that you can obtain uh, through the slides. Are we sending an email? Right? We'll be sending an email. Uh, yeah. They can get it. Yeah. And um, uh, or as I said, you can email us uh, about any topic related to MCBK at the email address uh, that you see on the slide. Uh, uh, Rachel, back to you. Great, Thank, thanks Chuck. And I'll encourage uh, people, we've got a couple of comments in the chat, um, and I'm not sure if they were intended for the audience, but I'm gonna put these folks on the spot. Um, uh, Tony Solomonides, do you have a, an announcement? Um, I wonder if I, uh, if I unmute you, if you might share that and any questions you have or comments. Sure, Rachel, thank you. Um, I've been working with uh, Jody and Blackwood on, um, on the trust and policy working group, and one of the things I undertook to do was to um, explore the possibility of a birds of a feather session at the uh, annual symposium in November. And um, I've had a positive response from the AMIA staff, so we're, I, I haven't been, I have not yet um, chosen a particular time, though uh, I've. I've polled co colleagues who will be there for, for their preference, and with any luck, we'll get the preferred time, um, and uh, which I think is uh, lunchtime on Tuesday. Um, the, um, the discussion amongst ourselves, though, did actually extend to the possibility of opening the, uh, the Birds of a Feather session to other working groups in um, in, in MCBK, and, and it, it, it may be worthwhile having that as a brief discussion now to whether people would like to have a joint session or whether to keep it specifically to our working group. I, I think that's terrific. Thanks for the announcement. Um, let's move on and then we'll see if we, I want to address some other comments and then we can see if there's um, a talk in that, but I, I'm sure we have folks that are interested and we'll be thrilled to know that this is not a 7 a.m. <laughs> session, but rather, rather a, 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 a lunch session that you're proposing for, for Amy. Uh, um, and I'll encourage if anyone does have comments on this thread, but go ahead and send them. Um, and we'll, um, uh, we'll open you up so we can um, continue that discussion thread if that's of interest. Um, I wanted to call on um, Derek Ritz, uh, if, if you're able to, um, to share your comment. You, had, you, you pointed to a resource from World Health Organization, and um, I, we'd love to hear your comments on that. Sure, I know there's been uh, a few folks have already called out the idea that this is uh, uh, an initiative that deserves to have global involvement. And uh, when that comment was made, I made a comment, Rachel, to say there's WHO has an initiative underway that I think is a terrific uh, complement and uh, could be very helpful to this, and that this could be very helpful to that. Uh, WHO, as a lot of folks know, manages the Global Health Observatory, which is uh, reported into annually on a summary basis by, well, ostensibly all, all 194 uh, countries that are members of WHO. Uh, they have an initiative underway, and it's a, a, expected to be a long-running initiative, so a five- to ten-year plan. It has two distinct phases to it. The first phase is uh, for WHO to double down on digital health as a way to close what they call the no-do gap, which is the difference between what we know we should be doing and what we're actually practically doing on the ground. Uh, so the, they publish about 50 care guidelines, and in any given year, they're either, either refreshing or publishing net new about, about 20 care guidelines. Uh, the first phase of this initiative is to express those long narrative care guidelines that read more like a Cochrane analysis than they do like anything that would be easily digestible, and express those as, as computable artifacts, something that could be ingested by and operationalized by a digital health solution. Uh, these CCGs, computable care guidelines, include the minimum data set for care delivery, uh, business logic or care escalation logic, 
and the reportable indicators that would naturally uh, be able to arise from uh, evidence-based care. The second phase of this long-running initiative that WHO has is to be able to leverage the person-centric data, the large, very large data sets of person-centric data that would, um, that would be generated by CCG adoption and uh, use machine, machine learning techniques to create the, the big feedback loop to say how can this, uh, this big feedback loop improve care delivery in these countries and then how can it also improve the care guidelines themselves. Uh, Great. And I posted some links related to that, Rachel. Wonderful. Thank you. And I, I will say, uh, and, and I've opened up the work group, co-chairs are unmuted if people do want to comment, but uh, I appreciate you sharing that. It, it, there are so many complementary uh, efforts out there and initiatives and things that we need to be aware of and that we can learn from and partner with. That we are, our approach is to log them, and we are trying to continually do env environmental scans and, and, and log this and, um, and make sure the appropriate work group is, is aware. So, uh, so thank you for sharing. Um, we have just about three minutes left, and I, I've got one other question, uh, but also wanted to give – um, a moment. So if our co-chairs or Chuck want to jump in um, at any point, otherwise I think I'll stop. And other questions we're happy to receive uh, by email and we can certainly address on future web webinars. Uh, Jonathan Kay made a quick uh, a note here about Arden Syntax and uh, maybe maybe Bruce you might want uh, to address or, or another work group uh, co-chair. Um, Jonathan, are you unmuted? Seem unmuted. Uh, are you able to speak? If, if not, I'll go ahead and read your question. Uh, it's interesting. Um, if it brings us in this, the clinical decision support world again, anything from Arden Syntax that can help more on the background and ways of working than the technology. Um, and I think this sort of plays to the theme that others have said. There's so much we can learn from different standards uh, communities. Um, so. Uh, but I'm not as familiar with the Arden Syntax community. Bruce, do you have any uh, uh, thoughts yes, on that? Yes, uh, Bruce. So yeah. well, Arden is, of course, one of the many standards that can can uh, play in this space. And I think uh, uh, it's a good example of one of the earlier ones that's been out there. And I, I think uh, certainly room to, to really pay attention to all of the different uh, ones out there, including all the way to the new CDS hooks uh, side of things. So, all, all of that is is a, of interest in the in the knowledge management space. I think. Great, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, Have no. Um, Pete Haug here. Yeah, the uh, I work with the Arden Syntax Group, and uh, the uh, it's got a um, it got it has uh, several components that are specifically designed to uh, help place a specific. Uh, medical logic module uh, in uh, its right family and make it easy to understand what the uh, what the module is about and what it's um, you know what its support is and things like that so it, it is an early example of trying to do this kind of work great thank you I agree. Uh, and we're now down. We've just got one minute left, so I, I will respond to the other notes that I'm getting here in the chat. But I wanted to give Chuck the last word. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, any final announcements and, and, and parting uh, thoughts before we close? Uh, I, I just want to uh, thank everybody for uh, participating. I didn't count the uh, the numbers in in the window uh, of participants, but it looks like we have had well over 100 participants. Um, in, the, in this workshop, I, I see many uh, names I recognize, and, and uh, uh, I'd like to say <laughs> hello to uh, all of my friends and colleagues who are uh, participating, and, uh, and uh, also to those of you who uh, I don't know and have not met. I, I, I very much appreciate uh, your being part of this. I just want to conclude by saying this is an open movement. It's an open community. Uh, we've kept the MCBK info uh, email address uh, in front of you on the slides here. The work groups are open. The meetings are open. 
everything is open. Uh, we need to grow. We need to accelerate. The meeting videos and summaries from July are available uh, on, mo on the Mobilize uh, CBK dot org uh, web website and uh, let us hear from you. We will, um, we, we, we want to grow the movement and uh, we would very much appreciate your help and great ideas in doing that. So, again, Rachel, uh, I think we're pretty much finished for this. Okay, we'll call this, we'll call this success. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, have a wonderful afternoon and stay tuned for more MCBK updates. Thank Bye. you, bye-bye.